<laughs> Hello YouTube! Sentinel H here with episode 1 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. Um, Rotary Craft has become my favorite tech mod. Uh, I, I love it. But the it's it, it's pr it's pretty complicated. The, the power system is complicated. It's not straightforward like the other mo tech mods. So uh, a lot of people might feel uh, intimidated by it and therefore not want to get into it. So I'm hoping that this tutorial series will help any of you who are kind of on the fence uh, about whether to pick up Rotary Craft um, because it, it really is an awesome mod pack. So uh, mod. Yeah. So let's get into it. Um, this first video is going to talk specifically about the very first steps that you need to take when getting into Rotarycraft. It's going to be a short video, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth. Um, so anyway, the first item you want to craft uh, when you want to get into Rotarycraft is the handbook. And what the handbook is, is a really detailed, almost a wiki, about the mod. Uh, it's got all the information you, want, you would ever want about all the machines, well, just about. There's some bits and bobs you might that the, rotary, the handcraft can't really tell you, handbook. But it's got a ton of information in it. You really want to make it, you really want to read it. Um, it'll explain pretty much, you know, almost everything you want to know about any of the machines. So to craft it is really simple. It's six paper, two redstone dust, and an iron ingot, like so. Gets you the rotary craft handbook. So once you have the handbook, right click with it in your hand to turn the sky white <laughs> and open up the table of contents. So it's, it's got a lot of pages, it's got a lot of sections. It, it, every single machine and item in the mod is in this book. Um, like if I click on power supply, now I have uh, all of the generators. And if I click on one, it tells me everything I want to know about it. And if I go to the second page, it tells me all the relevant power information, the amount of torque and speed and power that it produces. We'll talk about power in depth later. Suffice to say that reading through the handbook, um, especially the basic terms section, will really help you to get um, get into it, like the relevant physics page and everything uh, about Rotorcraft. Just really completely indispensable uh, information. So definitely make the handbook. Okay, so once you've got the handbook and you want to start making machines, you have to make a blast furnace. This is the gateway into Rotorycraft, because you have to get Rotorycraft's special uh, steel, and this is the only way to make it. Well, there's another way to make it, but but this is the only way you can make it um, getting into it. And it's really cheap. It's just a piece of redstone dust surrounded by stone bricks. So really cheap, really cheap, uh, and, and easy to use, easy to get. So that's the blast furnace. We go on. So the blast furnace, let's just break this. The blast furnace has to be uh, heated in order to work. Um, it, the coal that you put into the blast furnace does not heat it. It's not like a furnace, a regular furnace that burns resources. It's heated by the environment. And the best way to do that is to put a block of lava underneath the blast furnace. So I, you know, pop a hole, put a block, put lava in there, place the blast furnace. So it starts at 40 C because we're in the desert. The desert's ambient temperature is 40 C. Over in the grassy area over there, it'd be 20. And if you put this like over a, b a block of water, it cools it down by a bit. Um, but now you see that it, the temperature is rising. Uh, it's heating up uh, by about one c two C every second, uh, and this will eventually get up to 640 C and then stop because it's as hot as the lava can make the uh, blast furnace. But that's perfect because uh, you only need 600. And um, so that's how you have to set up your blast furnace with a piece of lava underneath it. All right. So once you've done that and your blast furnace is heated up like this one is come inside and we can actually uh, start making some steel. So uh, this may look um, intimidating, but you can, all, you can click on this if you have the handbook to go straight to the Blast Furnace's handbook page, which is awesome. Okay, but I know how to use this. Okay, so you need uh, four resources to make the Blast Furnace work. You need coal, you need gunpowder, and you need sand. And then they go in these slots, just like that. Now, that you only ever need one gunpowder, and it's important to note. Uh, gunpowder is used as a catalyst, but it's not consumed, so just put some gunpowder in there and you're good to go. It will consume coal, it will consume sand. And these nine slots are all for, uh, for iron. This thing smelts really quickly, and you can get a large amount of uh, steel very fast, because it will smelt nine at a time. Um, no matter how much iron you're looking to turn into steel, you should always fill all of these slots. So always do multiples of nine, always fill all nine slots. Um, because when it processes, it has a chance to double uh, 
the output of each of these slots. So if you fill all nine of them, you could get 17 or 18 uh, steel out of nine ingots. Um, so definitely fill all the slots. So if I just go ahead and fill this up, I think I got this in the wrong slot. <laughs> there we go. I had it wrong. Sand on top, coal in the middle, gunpowder on the bottom. I'm sure the, the manual probably told me that. And it'll run. See, it, it runs pretty quick. And I got 13. HSLA steel ingots. I put 9 iron in, I got 13 out. Notice it only took 1 off of each of these. And it runs again. Consumes 9. And we got 11 this time. Now you won't always get extras, but you could get up to almost double. So it's really great. It's really efficient. And you notice it's used up a couple of coal. And it's only used up one sand. I've noticed the sand doesn't always go down. The coal always does. And that's another thing. Uh, if you remember to fill all nine slots, you're going to make most efficient use of your coal. And you do get in, uh, you do get experience for making this. Now, uh, this mod uses a ton of this stuff, an absolute ton of steel. So you're going to need a lot of it. Um, I tend to make maybe I tend to like fill this twice or three times. Um, process maybe you know between nine and eighteen, sometimes twenty-seven um, iron ingots, and that usually gives me enough steel to build what I'm looking for. Look at what I'm looking to build. Because some of these uh, machines do use regular iron as well, so I wouldn't turn all of your iron into steel. But once you've got steel, you're ready to get going. There we go. We process all of it. Remember we threw uh, 64 iron ingots in. Only 63 actually went in here. And we ended up with quite a bit extra steel. So the blast furnace, definitely nice. Um, good at doubling your steel. So... That is the basics to getting started in Rotary Craft. These are the first steps that you must take to get into the mod pack. Uh, next episode, I'll be covering power generation, and uh, we'll be getting into the first little automatic machine systems that you're going to maybe set up. So, uh, I've been Sentinel H. I'll see you next time, and I'm signing out.